this is the essential Marvel Godzilla collection which we pre The King of the Monsters is over 60 years old. It began in 1954 in Korjira. Soon became a phenomenon in a franchise which has expanded since the 50s. So, what makes me a Godzilla fan? Uh, Godzilla, what did he mean? My reintroduction came in the form of G Fan Fanzine Magazine. Good evening. The King of the Monsters is over 60 years old. What began in 1954 in Gorjira, Godzilla, in Japan, soon became a phenomenon in a franchise which has expanded since the 50s. Godzilla is an amazing figure, icon even which is very well world known. I've been a fan since the 80s. Maybe even, well, I was born in 1979. Godzilla was a thing for me in the 80s when I first watched The Return of Godzilla, aka Godzilla 1985, I believe, on UK VHS video. The one that started it all off, for me anyway, Around about this time I was watching the Hanna-Barbera Godzilla series as well. These were memorable times and as a kid you'd grow up watching this type of stuff and talking about it the next day in the playground sort of thing in the schoolyard. A recess, as you like to call it, across seas. And all this was really relatable. So just sit back, relax. Just enjoy what the world has to offer in their love for God's sake. <laughs> Watching those classic uh, VHS tapes. Uh, I remember going to uh, go out shopping, 17 months old. Parents buy me Godzilla 1985 on VHS. Been hooked ever since. I got them all on DVD, got them all around that I need to have. Then it goes into the actual figure lines. You, know, you got your X Pluses, you got your SH Monster Arts, you got your old Bandai, you have Trend Masters. All excellent ways to expand the universe, expand all the characters and the monsters involved. Then meeting all of the wonderful people who were friends. I mean, they were a few when I was little. Got to, uh, you know, talk about it, and apparently I was the guy to come to about the information. But then I got a little older, and things started to calm down a little bit. Not many people were into it, but then there was a resurgence for uh, Godzilla. And with that resurgence, you got to meet a whole new group of people at this one place called G-Fest. Uh, G-Fest got to meet several of the uh, actors and actresses involved with the films. Wonderful people. I got to meet other content creators of Godzilla here on YouTube as well. More wonderful people. I had many conversations with them. Awesome, down-to-earth, very nice people as well. Then going to other horror movie conventions and finding Godzilla stuff there as well. It gave me even more actors from the films as well, especially the ones from the 90s. 
awesome dude, lots of fun. And mainly, when it comes to the films, there is an ethical dilemma going on with pretty much all the films. You know, there's commentary on things such as nuclear weapons, the Cold War, strangely the Y2K uh, scare back in 1999, the tsunami that uh, hit Japan several years ago, all being uh, brought up in Godzilla films and showing how they can uh, be contemporary for all audiences, showing uh, problems for all people to be a part of and be a part of the solution. And in closing, it's a great franchise, it's a great people, and I wouldn't trade for anything. Uh, so rather than talk about all my favorite movies or the monsters or the merchandise, I'm just going to tell you about my um, introduction to Godzilla. Um, I think that probably is why I love him so much, why I still watch the movies to this day. Um, Okay, so if you cast your mind back to 1990, 1991, that's when Channel 4 did the Creature feature, which was um, six or seven weeks' worth of Godzilla films every Friday night. Um, my parents said that I was allowed to stay up and watch it. So at the time I was eight or nine, um, and this was a film that started about 10 o'clock at night, so I was very excited to be allowed to be treated as a grown-up, as it was, and um, stay up late with, um, with my older brother, my mum and my dad. Um, Straw Monsters was the first film, and I was out watching it because I saw the advert and had that, um, that giant spider and I was just like, no, not watching that. Um, but the next next week I decided I'll, I'll do it because I've grown up on films like um, Jason the Argonauts and um, Sinbad. So I thought, no, I really should give this guy, it's going to be my type of thing. So next Friday night, Invasion of the Astral Monsters, stayed up from you know, 10 to like nearly midnight with my old brother, mum and dad. They even let me have a little bit of um, cherry brandy, like shots were. It lasted me the whole um, but you know, I love I love monster movie. I love being up with my family, being treated like a grown up. And so when I think of Godzilla, I'm thinking of my family. I'm thinking of it's, it's fond memories. And so every time that the Godzilla movie was on TV, it'd either be me and my family, or when my parents got bored, it was just me and my brother. Um, so you know, Godzilla has such a nostalgia to me that whenever a new film comes out, I still watch it. I still. I still enjoy my monster movies and it gives me fond memories. So that's why I'm still a Godzilla fan to this day. Got something to show you guys. Something that helped reintroduce me and understand the background and information on the Japanese Toho films that were being made that were not really being shown over here. Right guys, this was my reintroduction to Godzilla back in the 90s. And here we go. My reintroduction came in the form of G-Fan fanzine, magazine, publication from North America got some artwork which I did in college still unfinished more merchandise G Fan magazine good introduction to Godzilla all kinds of kaiju you just Amazing magazine. Guys, uh, these came out in 1995 from Manga Home Video. Uh, 1991's Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, followed by 1992's Godzilla vs. Mothra. Yeah, another good intro to Kaiju High Sea Series style. IC series basically started in 1989 and in 1995. It doesn't include the Return of Godzilla, which I always thought was a part of the IC series, which apparently is part of the Showa series. Um, yeah, great videos. K 
cannot read them on DVD. Sadly, we only got the majority of Godzilla releases on VHS tape in the day. And not too much on DVD slash Blu-ray. But, yeah, Godzilla Battles King Ghidorah. In 1991's Godzilla vs King Ghidorah. Godzilla Battles Mothra. 1992's Godzilla vs Mothra. And he also battled Batra. The Dark Mothra. Loved these in the day. Loved them so much. Hi there everybody, my name is Andrus Ramos, movie director from Sweden. I'm here to talk to you about why I love Godzilla, the king of the monster. And it's really the king of the monster. And it's not only Godzilla is like the biggest, meanest, baddest, or legendary monster you can see on the big screen. No. The reason why I love Godzilla is because it's origin story. It all begins is a creature living peaceful on an island. Before you know it, it get hit by the blast. The blast come from actually not other than a nuclear bomb. And we all know <laughs> nuclear bombs is bad news. And, and bef yeah, before you know it, we have a big ass lizard destroy Japan. One movie after another one. And that is about why I love Godzilla. It's really the uh, human cars mistake coming to hunt us. We have to pay for our past. We have to pay for our sins. And how he does that? Yeah, Godzilla is the answer. Uh, Godzilla is like a mother nature to say, no way, you have to take back what you've done to me. You have to take back you have what you have done for this island. You have to take back what you've done for this creature. That's why the reason I love Godzilla. Especially the ladies want to shin Godzilla. Every movie is like a huge disaster movie. How can a country recover from that? There's also one reason why I love Godzilla. How can you recover from an attack from a kaiju monster, from Godzilla, or from actually from an attack from anyone? Yeah. Uh, Godzilla, what did he mean to me? Well, when I was little, I grew up pretty much my grandmother had to watch me because my mom was sick a lot and uh, in the basement she had a ranch style home it was like a whole nother apartment there was a refrigerator a freezer a stove a TV and a couch just like a living room and on Saturday nights I would go over there and Sunday and generally just hang out in the basement and at night Chiller Theater was on and I'd watch Godzilla till like 3 in the morning <laughs> every time and I'd have a snack and a drink oh good times huh anyway my friend at work gave me these they're ornaments never saw them as Christmas ornaments before One, two, see, the culprit, batteries, and this was the newest one too. Oh well, Joanne fabric, I mean, uh, pack of Tim's. Anyway, this was extremely neat because even so, the back one goes, Piedra, Megalon, Rodan and Mothra. 
as you go through it, it changes. I love this one. Then we got the big one with his name. And this all lights straight down like the flame and these light up. King of the Monsters. And then this is the biggest one I have, which is sad because when I was a kid, I had one twice this size. I found this at a dollar store one day. Pretty good for the dollar, right? His eyes, look at the teeth. Perfect teeth. Now you know he don't have perfect teeth. He must have got dentures. But look. Okay, I got this book on Godzilla on my mind. King of the Monsters. It's a good read about Godzilla. By William Sui Sui. Su Sui. And I have this in Blu-ray. So I never have to be without. I have way more. But some of them are VHS and they're packed away. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed what little I could do. And thank you, John, for letting me be part of this. Oh, one more thing. I got... Godzilla, Mothra, and Ghidra ringtones from Zedge.com, Z-E-D-G-E.com, on Android or Apple, okay? So, they're pretty cool. And again, they're not at the forefront right now. I have another ringtone, but... Rawr, Godzilla. This is Bane with EMZT Radio, and today I'm talking about Godzilla. I was raised on Godzilla. Every Saturday morning here in my hometown, they would have a sci-fi special and they would always show a Godzilla movie. Now, the main thing I really loved about Godzilla was that he was protector of children. And um, even though he'd be saving the people of Tokyo and Japan from all the monsters and space aliens, he especially protected children. And one of my favorite movies was Son of Godzilla where we met Minya, who, was, who could do, he could make himself as like half the size of Godzilla, and then he could also make himself small, like human size, to interact with, the, with kids. And uh, the funniest part was that Minya would blow atomic smoke rings, because he wasn't strong enough to blow uh, his breath weapon, until Godzilla stepped on his tail and made him breathe atomic fire. So that was great. Godzilla. Love Godzilla. I think I started when I was 5, 6, up to 13. Watched Godzilla every Saturday morning. And uh, he was one of my favorite monsters before I met the classic movie Monsters. Love Godzilla. It's August the 7th, 2017, and the guy that originally played Godzilla for 12 films or so, um, from 1954 to 1972, in Godzilla vs. Gaigan being his last film, has passed away. This has really upset fans, and I can understand why, because people growing up on Godzilla, having memories, and... It's just really, really sad. Um, he was 88. 
started off in Gardera 1954 from Toho Studios. He went on to play all kinds of monsters like in War of the Gargantuas. Even played Rodan, I believe. And just loads of monsters he, play, he played and really helped childhood you know blossom uh, with watching the films of Godzilla and Toho Studios so just really sad huge fan of Godzilla. I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan of all sort of Japanese uh, kaiju, um, giant monster sort of things, um, you know, uh, Sentai, Ultraman, uh, Pacific Rim, Power Ranger, any, anything that involves a giant monster destroying cardboard cities. I'm all about that. Um, so really the thing I could say about Godzilla that I love um, the most Back in 90, 1996, um, MTV did this um, Lifetime Achievement Award for Godzilla. And it, I, I thought, to me, it was supposed to be a gag. Like, hey, let's give Godzilla a Lifetime Achievement Award. But I thought, in reality, it was the most honest Lifetime Achievement Award ever given <laughs> in film. Because something about Godzilla is so iconic. And so, it's the most recognizable character in film history. I mean, you could say, like... Oh, Marilyn Monroe, okay, you know, people know Marilyn Monroe, but, you know, most people haven't seen a Marilyn Monroe movie. I mean, honestly, unless you're, like, a film fan. But if you say Godzilla, like, everybody's seen a Godzilla movie. Even, like, a bad American Matthew Broderick one. Everybody's seen a Godzilla movie. So there's really no, uh, you know, there's nobody that doesn't immediately recognize Godzilla. But I thought Godzilla is the most iconic film character in history, personally. And, um... That's why I love that MTV Movie Award, it was so honest and personable. And what's funny about Godzilla is we've tried to, sort of the Americans have tried to remake Godzilla more than once, and I just think it loses something. It's something inherently, uh, culturally Japanese about Godzilla, and it's like when it remakes as an American film, I, I, I think it loses something. It also loses something in, in its charm and its appeal when it's not cardboard buildings being destroyed and, and a rubber suit, uh, you know, attacking <laughs> tiny little cars and subways. So it, it, it sort of loses something when it's an overly CGI character. It, the character is a rubber suit, and I think in the future, any future Godzilla movie just needs to be a man in a suit or a woman in a suit playing Godzilla. Um, <laughs> it's just It just needs to be that. I, I just think any CGI enjoyed Shin Godzilla. Um, but it was such a different movie. I know it was a CGI Godzilla, but it lost something and it's not being just a rubbery <laughs> suit. And that's just the most iconic, iconic image in cinema, I think, honestly. Godzilla is cinema. Everyone will always, always, no matter what language you speak, recognize Godzilla. The thing about Godzilla is it's a cultural icon, and not just within Japan. I mean, he's literally a giant. He's, he's bigger than buildings. It's more than that. I mean, when I was a kid, every kid I knew knew what Godzilla was. And this is just a Japanese film and a lot of the time people over here would see it with English dubs, with foreign actors, and it was a very alien thing. Most, most kids don't really venture outside of Hollywood, but most kids 
at least know what a Godzilla film is. They know it's Japanese actors and that the mouths don't match the voices. They know it's dubbed, even if they don't know what dubbed is. And they love it. And part of the magic, part of the magic is the suit. And that, that's something the Americans really lost when they went the CGI route. But, you know, you've got this guy in a suit and it's the same magic as the Harryhausen effect. It's the same magic as King Kong. And I think that the thing is, you've got a guy inside that suit bringing it to life. It's, it's, an, it's a layer above stop motion. There's an actual human being bringing personality and character to that. And admittedly, it, there's physically more limitations than stop motion, but there's a magic to it that's just unique, and all Godzilla fans are going to know what that is. And even if you can't describe it, you can feel it. I personally think that with the, the millions it's made, keep in mind that Toho is one of Japan's biggest studios, and their, their building has a giant Godzilla head that the eyes glow at night. How iconic is that? You know, it's... I mean, there, there's nothing in America that quite compares. I don't think America have something that's so cultural. Consider this. When, when people think of Japan, they think of samurai and they think of sushi, they think of the, the giant buildings in Tokyo, but they also think of Godzilla. When pop culture references uh, Japanese culture, there's always a Godzilla gag in there. That's how big and how iconic uh, this monster is. He's larger than life, you know, and I think even although Godzilla is not a person, and even although the character itself is not, well, it, it really isn't as much a well-defined character as a monster because, you know, with King Kong, there was all these emotions he was feeling, love for a human being. With Godzilla, you know that there's pain and there's anger and basic emotions, but really what people love is that as primal and animalistic as he is, there's something relatable in the way he uh, is affected by these tragedies, nuclear weapons. It, it started off as a very socio-political film and Godzilla became bigger than his own message. It, the whole thing is just fascinating and now we have all these movies about Godzilla fighting the dozens of other monsters out there and I love those even as much as I love the original although it was uh, historically and culturally far more important. An icon that will live on forever, decades and centuries probably after they stop making Godzilla films. Shin Godzilla Day. Shin Gojua. Playing for one night only here in Nottingham in the UK. He's playing in London as well. A few nights in London, but for one night here in Nottingham. So we'll have to see Shin Gojua tonight on the big screen. Off to see Shin Godzilla. Godzilla. Alex, what are we going to see tonight? We are going to see Shin Godzilla. We are indeed. Again, what are we have to see tonight, Alex? We're going to go see Shin Godzilla. <laughs> Shin Godzilla. Godzilla. New Godzilla. Back to Shin Godzilla. Back to Shin Godzilla. What do you think, John? Okay, well, 
The opening I felt had a very much a um, Cloverfield vibe to it. Yeah, with all the handheld cameras, handheld. and I was liking yeah. that. Oh, you like that? Did you? I did like that, and some of the visuals, some of the visuals at the beginning were really good of, of some of the instructions and the panicking. I really liked that. Then, kind of like, then there was a lot of the well, talky talky bits. Talking. That was the one thing about this film. It had a lot of talking. Basically, a lot of political meetings. There was a meeting, which led to another meeting, which led to another meeting, and basically back and forth to other yeah, meetings. Exactly. There was like different political um, mm. aspects of the government, like the, the higher up government and then the military, and each one had their little meetings and the people who were working on how mm. to fight against the monster. Now, here's the thing I noticed: is there were some of the shots that looked really good. Mm -hmm. Then there's some of the shots that weren't. Some were good, some were not. Was it the CGI but, that put you off somewhere? Mm, sometimes, yes. Suit mation. Yes, it had, a, it had an almost where you had live action in the foreground and then um, monster in the background. It kind of almost invoked a um, kind of a Power Ranger, kind <laughs> of slap Power Ranger vibe. Yeah. Or, or Sentai. Sentai. Sentai, yeah, like, yeah, classic Sentai, Sentai. Sentai Ranger vibe. Japan. <clears throat> which kind of like made it look a bit cheaper. Now the weird thing is that sometimes the film looked a bit cheap, mm -hmm. as at other times it didn't. And looked, but the one thing was very real. You felt it was in a very real world. Like yeah. They were filming with real military vehicles. Yes. Yeah. Um, and they were filming it inside cockpits. And yeah. The, some of the cameras, the point of views, like there was the tank operators, mm -hmm. and the cameras like on their nose because basically they were filming inside the tank. The also thing about this film in Shingo Jura is that it reminded me of the Return of Godzilla, where mm. Godzilla's on his own sort of thing, mm. kind of going back to his dark roots. And it was, if yes. you want to go back even further than that, we've got the original 1954 Gojira. Yeah. And its design was a bit like that, plus the use oh, of cues of 1954 music. The and music, the, oh, I oh, love that. I love that. that. It was just. I mean, it's, it was it's, epic. The, the music almost sounded out of place, but it also worked. It's like I it, agree with you on that. Yeah, one. Yeah, I, yeah, I noticed that when I first watched the film. This is the second time I watched it, and this it, is the it, second time watching it, I took it in a lot more. But and they, they they gave I you it a lot yeah, more. Yeah, they I they think. gave you a lot more. I think it's because you, you had your expectations in the first time you watched it, as well. Now yeah. you could just enjoy it. Yeah, and you came to the big fight finish at the end. Mm. You knew exactly what was going on. That was the one thing that was good about the process of the film. It takes it through meticulously, and sh and go you go from scene to you know what's happening at what's happening in front of you. As like some action movies, like Godzilla movies, you don't know half the time it's just boom, 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 explosion, explosion, yeah. explosion. Like in the Return of Godzilla, the kind of from nineteen eighty four, the kind mm. of um, get rid of Godzilla by using chirpy bird sounds mm. like for like for like. Radars yeah. and they lure him up to like this volcano mm -hmm. mountain where they set off explosions and stuff. But it's going getting back to um, Godzilla himself. Um, again, when Godzilla became true form, it was like, Yes, that's Godzilla, exactly. That is him, exactly. And again, there's some shots that just look beautiful, but there were some that were like, Yeah, I wasn't too sure about that. But the more we got and the further we got into the movie. Mm the better the shots looked. I mean, you said your favourite shot was when he just went ape. And um, just basically annihilates the city with his uh, atomic <sighs> breath. Uh, yeah, just sending it all alight and different... And, and all the, the, the lasers coming out the back and his tail at the same time. It was like, oh my Yeah, he's... Um, like, the, he, he's had, he had that, the flame, which then, then kind of concentrated into a the beam. The jaw coming out. And... And then that beam had an almost oh like a classic Godzilla anime, sound. Yeah, yeah. And it's like anime yeah. animated beam of atomic breath sort of thing. Mm. What does Godzilla mean to you? Well, Godzilla is I mean I'm I'm not you, I'm not a massive Godzilla fan, but Godzilla is it's an icon. It's it's I mean uh, as I was growing up, Godzilla is as as much as an icon as Superman or Batman or Spider Man. It was something that was integral to part of my growing up. Yeah. And I grew, there was the movies were were, were present. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up with the the nineteen eighties, well nineteen seventies, nineteen eighties Godzilla cartoon. Mm -hmm. Hanna Barbera. Seen, uh, Hanna Barbera, yeah. It wasn't great. But oh my god, you love that kind of stuff. So Godzilla to me it's 
it's something that's omnipresent, and, it, and I, I always have enjoyed my Godzilla movies. I'm not a Godzilla nut, I mm. like my Japanese movies and my anime, I'm not Godzilla, but I do enjoy a good Godzilla movie. And was it a pleasant surprise seeing Shin Godzilla? Oh gosh, yes. I mean, the fact that this was back to its roots, as you say. Dark. Dark. It, it, it was. It was um, unapologetic. It's a Godzilla movie. Godzilla shows up, screws up the town, they find a way of beating him. That is the basis of the whole film. No fighting monsters or anything like that. I don't have wanted, but I suppose if you, you want to, if you, yeah. but I suppose if you're doing like this is this is true Godzilla, then you've got to go back to the roots, which is just Godzilla. True. I mean, if they do more movies off this, I won't mind a bit of Mon Mothra, exactly, and all the loads of monsters showing up. Well, maybe a new monsters. Yeah, that might call yeah, yeah, yeah. new monsters. Yeah. Uh, but thank you very much, Alex. Um, hello, my name is uh, Sebastian Gore. I am a uh, uh, no-budget filmmaker based out of Ontario, Canada, and I love Godzilla. Uh, my love for Godzilla dates back to when I was very, very young. The first film I saw theatrically was Godzilla 2000, which I have an action figure of right here. Um, the first movie I remember begging to own on VHS was Godzilla 1985, which I saw when I was... I saw it after Godzilla 2000, I think it was about five or six. The movie made me cry. It was the first movie to ever make me cry. Um, Ever since then, I just loved everything about Godzilla, and eventually I grew to uh, be aware of the other kaiju films that came out of Japan during that era and onward. Uh, Gamera, Space Amoeba, uh, I love Ultraman, uh, the Daimajin movies, stuff like King Kong Escapes, Varen, uh, the Mysterians even, even though that's not a kaiju film, but uh, the sci-fi Takasatsu, Stuff that came out of Japan during that time period, it uh, really, really speaks to me on a level where I um, feel I feel like those movies are the ultimate form of escapism in a way, because they feel so grand and theatrical in their display of special effects of monsters of disasters. They manage to transport me as a viewer more than any other type of film can, and Godzilla is my favorite fictional character of all time, mainly because he's proven to be the long, most, one of the most enduring pop culture icons of all time. I mean, we look here, we see one all the way from the 50s to the 2000s era to the current time and how each design kind of reflects the aesthetic of each time period. It's really impressive. Um, Godzilla is a character that has gone through a lot of changes. He's been an icon of nuclear destruction, of death and despair, and the terrors of war and what mankind is capable of. He's been a superhero. He's been this big, goofy, lovable icon for kids to cheer on while he fights, you know, Mechagodzilla or Gigan, Me uh, Megalon. He's been a uh, Everything from a giant radiated dinosaur to uh, the conglomeration of souls from soldiers who died in World War II to whatever Shin is. I love him. He's a weirdo. I don't uh, think anybody who loves monster movies, who loves uh, this genre, can say that they don't appreciate what Godzilla, the original film, at the very least, did for us and how it revolutionized things. And with the passing of Haruo Nakajima, the first actor to portray Godzilla and who also portrayed a multiple number of kaiju, he played Gai- uh, did he? No, he did not. Got a little screw-eyed there for a second. He played King Kong though in King Kong Escapes. He was one of the Matango, the mushroom people. Varen, my, well, my favorite non-Godzilla kaiju is Varen, so I love that he played both of them. Uh, Gaira, the evil Gargantua from War of the Gargantua is a terrific film. Uh, with his passing, I feel like it's important for fans and even non-fans to reflect a bit on everything that 
Godzilla represents and everything that he means to the fan base and even to just pop culture in general. And with the state of affairs in the world as well, I think it's important now more than ever to remember what the character is meant to represent and uh, how the fact that he could adapt with the times so much proves that I don't think he'll ever go out of fashion in a way. I feel like uh, we'll be seeing Godzilla forever, probably till the end of time. The fact of the matter is that we had a new movie last year and we have four, no, five more coming up, three animated films, two American live action films, and then who knows what's to come after that. Uh, it's an enduring franchise for a reason. People love it. I love it. It's a big part of who I am, and I don't think I'd be who I am today. I, I definitely wouldn't be who I am today without Godzilla, and I, I'm very proud to say that. One of my fondest memories of watching Godzilla films, you know, I can't really date which one was the first Godzilla film I've ever seen. One of my fondest memories, though, you know, way back when I was a kid, you know, 18, 20 years ago, on old school VHS tape, I sat down with my father and my uncle, sort of as family time, and uh, we watched King Kong vs. Godzilla. I, I can remember I had one of the funnest experiences in film. As you can see, I am a big film fan. These are all Blu-ray here. Uh, still one of my fondest memories of film, of watching film. I guess you can kind of say, uh, you know, sort of one of my fondest family experiences was actually sitting down and watching King Kong vs. Godzilla on old school VHS tape. Now, a lot of you guys might not remember VHS tape. Maybe you weren't around that time. But uh, it definitely was not the best medium. I think it was one of the better mediums to, uh, in, in my time, in my day, to get people involved in Godzilla, you know. Uh, I, I still have a lot of my old VHS tapes. I've got them all on DVD. I've got them all on Blu-ray. So you can see here, I do have a pretty decent-sized Godzilla collection. Um, I have no problem saying as a kid, I was entertained by men in costumes, you know. I say this as an adult. I am very proud. I am very happy to call myself a Godzilla fan. I think it's one of the best franchises of all time. You know, it's it's not a big American production. It's not a big American franchise. It's not a big American company. Toho had a gem on their hands back in 1954. And I think it still stands today, the 1954 film, which still is my favorite one of the franchise. I think it still holds up today. And I really hope the best for the future of this franchise as an adult. 23 years on, I am still proud to say I am a Godzilla fan. Collecting Godzilla and Kaiju toys is big business. Always has been. I guess it always will be. At conventions in Japan, around the world, G-Fest, you name it. I've collected the figures for a while myself and got a, a vast collection here and there and I'm proud of what I've got and what I've saved up uh, for over the years in my G collection I'm going to take a look now at a few other people's collections and people that are really inspired by Godzilla and Kaiju in general My name's David Gelmini. I write for the world famous horror news site Dread Central. I was first introduced to Godzilla as a kid when I saw reruns of the 1978 Hanna-Barbera cartoon on Cartoon Network and I was hooked ever since then. I've been a lifelong Godzilla fan ever since then. I love going to conventions and meeting fellow Godzilla fans and sharing my love for the franchise with them. I remember as a kid when the 1998 TriStar Columbia Godzilla film came out, I was so excited. I remember I got this money bank from Christmas which was made as a tie-in product to the film and this was one of my prized possessions as a kid. I put all my coins in here. This is a VHS tape of Godzilla vs. Gigan, which was originally released in 1972. I remember the thing about this film that always stood out to me was that Godzilla actually talks in this. We'd never heard him talk before, we'd only made him make that 
signature roaring sound which sounds like a rubber glove being pressed across a guitar string but in this film he actually speaks and I thought that was so hilarious as a kid I remember I laughed so hard whenever I watched this film and I would hear Godzilla and Angira say talk, talking to each other Godzilla would say hey Angiras come on and then Angiras would say what do you want and then Godzilla would say there's trouble ahead but I laughed so hard at hearing Godzilla talk as a kid This is Godzilla Final Wars, which was originally released in 2004. It was directed by Ryuhei Kitamura, who went on to direct the Clive Barker adaptation of Midnight Meat Train. This was made at a time when Toho had decided to retire the franchise for a number of years, so for their final Godzilla film in a decade or so, they decided to go all out with all the monsters, all the special effects, a much larger budget, and the result was basically everything a Godzilla fan could ever dream of. Um, my favourite moment from this film is actually one of my favourite moments, Godzilla moments of all time when you see the Japanese Godzilla fighting the American Godzilla from the 1998 TriStar Columbia film. Um, fans have actually nicknamed the American Godzilla just Godzilla because they feel he takes the god out of Godzilla. So seeing the, the Japanese Godzilla kicking the arse of the American Godzilla I felt was a very cathartic moment for the franchise. It was like the franchise taking back what, what, it, what, it, what belongs to it in a way. For me, Godzilla's not just an animal, he's a force of nature. He's unstoppable. Sometimes he's humanity's protector, and sometimes he's their destruction. You know, sometimes when humanity needs saving, he'll rise up from the depths of the Pacific Ocean to save the world. And sometimes when humanity is destroying the world, he'll he'll rise up to take his revenge on humanity. So, so he, he can be our saviour and our protector. That's what I love about Godzilla. He he doesn't listen to man, he he you know, he doesn't abide by our rules. He he he, he just does what what's right, you know? Either he'll save the world, either he'll save mankind or he'll save the world from mankind depending on what the situation demands. I mean, who, who doesn't wish, you know, there was a giant radioactive lizard slumbering in the depths of the Pacific Ocean who could rise up to be the protector of the world should the need arise. Um, I've accumulated quite a swag of Godzilla comics over the years. Um, firstly, this is the Essential Marvel Godzilla Collection which reprints all the Marvel comics featuring Godzilla when they held the rights to the character from 1977 to 79. There's, um, it's really cool because in this you see Godzilla going up against all kinds of characters from the Marvel Universe like Iron Man, Division, Thor, the Fantastic Four, even Spider-Man makes an appearance. So uh, Captain America as well. So, so it's so cool seeing Godzilla interact with the residents of the Marvel Universe. Um, this is my favourite moment from Marvel's Godzilla comic where you, you see Godzilla attempt to topple the Empire State Building and then Thor, the God of Thunder, pushes it back into place. So um, you see two gods playing tug of war with the Empire State Building that they're both mighty they're both incredibly strong and they're both just incredible awesome characters so this is a moment i love because it shows how mighty godzilla is going up against a, a might a, a literal god to god of thunder so, so i think this is an incredible moment this is godzilla age of monsters which was published by titan in 1998 after marvel lost the license i think this is also essential reading for fans one of my favorite moments is in here is when we get to see Godzilla going up against a giant statue of a samurai which is powered by the soul of a, of a former samurai warrior. I thought that was an incredible moment. These are two of my favourite Godzilla video games, Destroy All Monsters Melee and Save the Earth. Um, as a kid I loved, you know, finally being able to be Godzilla and to smash other monsters and to destroy buildings and cities. I, I loved the experience of finally becoming Godzilla. 
Um, unfortunately, these were published by Atari. Atari, um, their US division, has now filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, so these games have now been delisted. They're no longer available on digital storefronts to buy. But um, if, if you can get hold of a second-hand physical copy, they're definitely worth it. Um, for me, as a lifelong Godzilla fan, one of my proudest moments of the series was um, back in 2005 when National Geographic ran a story about how the newly discovered um, water dinosaur species had been nicknamed Godzilla by scientists. I thought that means that Godzilla, he, he's hit the big time. You know, I felt like a proud parent because the scientists had named their new discovery after him. That was a very proud moment for me. Hello. So, my name is Seth Early. Um, I'm, I guess, I play in a progressive metal band called The Dodge with Ryan, which uh, covered a uh, Godzilla song uh, called Destroyer of Worlds. Um, it was like multiple themes, and uh, my band covered it progressive metal style and released it on the internet with a lot of really positive feedback on it. Um, so definitely check it out, Destroyer Worlds on YouTube. Or you can look up uh, my band, The Dawn Chose Orion. So yeah, I'm a huge Godzilla fan, obviously. I guess I've, I've been a huge fan since uh, I was a kid. Um, my parents showed me, uh, I guess, some Godzilla movies <laughs> when I was a kid. And um, it was weird because they scared me, and then they also, like, you know, I don't know, made me happy at the same time. So, um, you know, the first movie I saw was, like, Godzilla, um, The Return of Godzilla, which, oh my god, Godzilla was so scary in that movie. But then, you know, I saw the other ones, like, you know, Godzilla vs. Guy again and whatnot, and, um... <laughs> You know, he became a hero as well. So he basically like, got a little. Uh, every incarnation of him um, relates to me in some way, whether he's scary or a hero, etc. And uh, it's just he's so diverse, and I, I myself, I feel like I'm the same way, and so I really connect with Godzilla. And not to mention, he's just he's just badass, you know. So. here um, my friend John Shelton asked me to do a quick fight of horror where I could just talk a little bit about Godzilla and I love this movie and it is the best movie in the franchise to me at least everyone is entitled to their opinion and this is the only one that I would really consider or the rest are more science fiction to me, but 
This one, definitely just due to the atmosphere that is never really matched in any of the movies. It's a real sense of dread that you get. Um, the Prayer of Peace is very effective, plus all the shots of the just injured sprawled out across the floor waiting to be treated. Um, it's really uh, quite grim, actually. Um, I love this movie. Um, lots and lots of great shots. Just phenomenal soundtrack. Um, basically, the only thing I can really fault this film for is that hand puppet. It doesn't look good, and the stop motion part, while it doesn't look bad, um, it's just only used, like, very briefly, so it always takes me out of the film when it does pop up. But yeah, I love this film so much, and it's clearly had a very big cultural impact on the world since. Um, for those that don't know, this is from 1954 by Toho Pictures. Directed by Yashiro Honda, with effects from AJ Subaraya. I also want to give quick props to the American edit of the film. They added in Raymond Burr's character, um, Steve Martin, and it's the only time that I've personally seen an American edit, or any type of edit, use body doubles to um, have the new characters interact with the existing ones, and it works very well in that film. Um, highly recommend the original Godzilla, either the original Japanese version or the King of the Monsters version. Both are quite good. The Japanese version is a bit slower, but has better character development in it. imitated, often remade, and they're never as good as the originals. From the depths, 30 stories high, breathing fire, he stands in the sky. You know, Godzilla movies, you know, the American big budget remakes are great. Like, I, I love them. I enjoy them. But they are not as iconic and, and memorable as the original man in a rubber suit with crushing, you know, little toy model tanks and toy model... Hey folks, it's Rob from Rob's Movie Collection, and that's what I always thought that Godzilla's roar should have sounded like in the 2014 version. A little bit of the classic roar mixed in with the new one, and some of the Godzilla, classic Godzilla theme uh, from the originals. That's the way it should have been, that's the way they should have shown some respect to the original. You know, soldiers and planes and things like that. So really, I, I mean, any of the original... Japanese, Ultraman, Super Sentai, you know, Kamen Rider, any, anything like that, that, uh, you know, gets remade in the United States, Godzilla, any, any of that sort of stuff, where it's just rubber suits and, and toy models and things like that, you know, as, as fun as it is uh, w when they remake it, it's just, it's just never as, as classic as the original stuff. And to me, I mean, I'd rather sit and watch hours of original rubber suits than and the big budget remake thing because you know that stuff doesn't stick with you the big budget remakes don't stick with you you watch them you know you watch them a few times but you know i could rewatch the original stuff a hundred times and still get a laugh 
and love it and just think, you know, hey, how much fun can this be? And that's something that they failed in in the uh, 2014 Legendary Godzilla film and something that I hope that they will improve upon in the new Godzilla King of the Monsters that's uh, premiering in a, in a month or two. Uh, so, House of Kaiju and Friends has asked me to make a short video as a collaboration with them uh, talking about uh, the new Godzilla movie, Godzilla King of the Monsters. Looks like it's going to be great, uh, kind of reminiscent of Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster uh, that came out so many decades ago where all these monsters come together and start fighting and have a big battle. Uh, it looks fantastic. My only com uh, complaint is that I, it looks like they've shown so much. I hope they haven't shown too much in all these trailers. That's the problem. There's always too many trailers. I hope there's something left for us. It's such a big monster smackdown that I can't imagine what they're going to do to top it in Godzilla vs. King Kong. But uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll get something good there too. Now I'm I'm a Godzilla purist. I, I love the original Godzilla films, the the uh, Japanese ones. Um, and while I I enjoy the these new American versions, what I like about them the best is that every time they make one, it spurs Toho, the Japanese company, to make another Godzilla film. When TriStar made the 1998 one, and Toho had killed off Godzilla, uh, we then uh, got Godzilla Millennium. And uh, when 2014 Godzilla came out after that, we got Shin Godzilla, which is not my favorite Godzilla, but at least it's the Japanese version. So uh, definitely looking forward to this one. Hello, I'm Ron Jones here from Vidorama, where we remember the VHS releases of the past in graphic detail. Um, I've been asked by John to speak a little bit about my interest in all things Kaiju. So, um, my earliest memory, as far back as I can remember, my earlier experience with Kaiju would be the classic Godzilla cartoon series by Hanna-Barbera. And I remember watching this every week and enjoying it greatly. And I also remember a uh, colouring in book that it had. I remember that being fun as well. But that was my earliest memory and that theme song is still stuck in there. I can't, you know, shake that off. But I hadn't seen a Godzilla movie and I wanted to see Godzilla movies because Godzilla was just part of the popular culture, but I'd never seen a movie. Uh, but the first Kaiju movie I watched a few years later, it was actually, I think this could have actually been the very first movie I ever rented on video, but that was Gappa. Very fond memories of this particular video. Going to the video shop and looking at it and just seeing a giant dinosaur that was breathing fire on helicopters and yeah. Great fun. Love this one. But I still haven't seen a Godzilla movie. Then flash forward... 1989. Channel 4 started showing Godzilla movies on a Friday night. I wasn't allowed to stay up that late, but I would record them and watch them first thing on a Saturday morning. And uh, the very first one I watched was... Destroy All Monsters. Absolutely loved this film. Uh, just that opening scene, seeing the island and just the run through of all the monsters that lived on Monster Island. It was like a checklist. It was just like, oh, I've got to find out more about that one. I need to find out more about that one. Um, and uh, yeah, so each week, I think for about six weeks, they would put out a different Godzilla movie and I watched it the next day and I was absolutely hooked. Um, I loved it. And I, I was the only one at school that actually liked these movies. So I'd very quickly uh, be distanced when I start talking about Godzilla and Rodan. But uh, yeah. Uh, but that was it, there was nothing on TV, I hadn't seen anything, and um, just so happens round about 1990 we had a video van that would pull up outside with all sorts of videos that we'd rent for a week, and so I rented Godzilla 1985. I did my own drawing of the Kaiju Monster Godzilla from 1985. Like I said, it was for a week, and... Oh, I can't even imagine how many times I watched it, but um, I watched it all through the week and absolutely loved it. And I would get quite emotional at the end of it as well, but uh, no spoilers. And uh, yeah, but I absolutely love that film. So, um, but fast forward to uh, last month, I painted a tribute to Godzilla 1985. And um, it, I was very pleased with that project because I was able to not only paint a tribute to a film I remember fondly, but I was finally able to work with John. We recently had the um, epic 
Godzilla vs. Kong in early 2001. On Netflix we had Godzilla Singular Point, the anime series. And for Godzilla coming from Japan, it seems to be a bit um, quiet at the minute, apart from Singular Point. And for the films themselves, um, maybe because of like economic issues and stuff like that, maybe we might not see Godzilla from Japan for a while. But always keep your fingers crossed, stay optimistic. The MonsterVerse, you know, which started in 2014, ended in Godzilla vs. Kong. Uh, kind of ended a bit on a high, but, you know, that could be as um, seen as like Phase 1. Jet Jaguars, Megalon, Godzilla 2014, Burning Godzilla, Little Godzilla, uh, Cyborg Gigan uh, from Godzilla Final Wars. We have... Godzilla 1968 from Destroyer Monsters, Biolante, etc, etc. Yeah, who knows what the future holds for the Monsterverse or even the Japanese Godzilla series. Uh, it would be good to see the Japanese series carry on. It's the longest running series, uh, followed by James Bond, longest running film series, etc, etc. But who knows what the future holds for the King of the Monsters and for the Monsterverse... Uh, for any spin-offs, you know, even for Gamera, his Gamera's gone a bit quiet as well. Speaking of Gamera, there he is facing Godzilla 2000 up there. We will just have to wait to see what's going to happen with the Godzilla universe in general and the monsters, the kaijus, spin-offs. Maybe the future is an anime. Who knows what the future of Godzilla is. So there we have it guys, um, Godzilla, we all love Godzilla, uh, we still love Godzilla and no matter what the future is for the Monsterverse, the Shin Godzilla, Shin Ultraman, Shin Kandan Rider, whether there'll be a Shin Gamera sort of thing, who knows, the fans will always be there. They're all appreciative and thanks to things like G-Fest and gatherings and just monster fans in general, Godzilla will live on in some capacity. Now I just wanted to say that uh, R.I.P. Akira Takarada who we just saw a tribute to and uh, very sad passing this year. When he passed away in about March time in 2022. He was about 87 years old and um, was a long living actor, long living gentleman indeed, who appeared in the original Godzilla film and appeared in the Shower films, uh, the Heisei films, and he's in even the Millennium films. You know, with Godzilla, you know, who knows what the future will be. And just to celebrate his birthday in general, uh, gathering the G fans, showing off their love for Godzilla. We still love Godzilla. We just got out of seeing Godzilla Minus One. Yeah, good film. Some December the 15th, 2023. First 
kind of day of it showing here in the UK. It's been across the world. It's been to Japan, which started off. Been to America. But what did you think to Godzilla minus one? Um, out of ten. Eight and a half, nearly nine. Nearly nine. And that's coming from pretty much a newish kind of Godzilla fan, kind of like. Newbie. Newbie sort yeah. of thing. Godzilla a virgin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. As a Godzilla fan, I for almost forgot I was watching a Godzilla film and I just realised it was all CGI, which I knew anyway, compared to the rubber suit monsters that we used to. Uh, but it was a bit better than Shin Godzilla, even though I didn't mind Shin Godzilla, the last Japanese Godzilla film. It's a standalone Godzilla film where he's fighting no other monsters or anything like that. It's quite an, It's got emotional parts in it, I'd say. Uh, it is a tear jerker. Uh, there's, there's no boring slow part. Yeah, the, we're still sort of films, films are slow, films aren't they? Slow to start. It was, it was setting the scene for the story. And it was a period piece as well. Yeah, and the emotion of what uh, was going through the main character. Another plan, Chicken. I can't pronounce the, uh, uh, sh the female yeah. protagonist. The, the little girl. Oh, the, the little girl, girl. yeah. She, 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 she was, was sweet, though. Yeah. Yeah. You see her grow up to be, uh, you know, beyond the top. But the, that's an interesting part of it. Uh, I, I think there'll be more, and uh, you might see it from her perspective if she gets older. Yeah, she was the next hero. Pro protagonist, yeah. is that right? No, she was the hero. Yeah. Protagonist is. You like, <laughs> no, I think that's an antagonist. Antagonist. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Michael. I appreciate your time. Anyway, guys, go and see it. Good night. Yep, enjoyed that film. Was, was that for YouTube or for? Uh, probably. Yeah. Godzilla.